What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jay Calderon, Stan Clear Entertainment, and we're about to get into the boxing talk. Today, we say farewell to one of the greatest British fighters of all time, three-time super middleweight champion, Carl the Cobra Frotch. Man, I got to tell you, this guy, I've been a fan of his for a very long time. I started watching him in about 2007. I followed Carl Frotch's career online, overseas. He's from... Um, Great Britain, Nottingham, and this dude, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that he's going away, man. He, he thrilled fans for many years. I watched him win his first world title against Jean Pascal from Canada in one of the thrilling fights that really got me to be a fan of Carl Frotch. He captured the WBC super middleweight title in about 2008, I believe it was, and um, he went on to thrill fans by coming to the United States to face former middleweight champion, Jermaine Taylor and that fight he got dropped in the third round and he was hurt But he came back battling man. This guy didn't give up He was losing the fight and it went down to the 12th and final round He was gonna lose the fight on on a decision and this boy in the last seven I believe it was the last 14 seconds. He dropped Jermaine Taylor with a vicious shot and he had him hurt, he knocked him out, and it was a great, great, great comeback, man. This dude, Frosch, he's, he's one of the best. I mean, this guy has a great chin, he has a long jab, an awkward style, a really awkward style, but a heavy-handed puncher with both hands, and um, he's just a warrior, man. He's, he's been around the world, he's traveled to people's backyard in different countries to defend this title, to win a title. I mean, he's a three-time world champion that has won four world titles at 168 pounds, the super middleweight division. He went into the Super 6 tournament that Showtime put together back in about, I think, 2009 against guys like um, Andre Ward, who was the Olympic gold medalist and the best super middleweight in the world, against former um, middleweight champion that was undefeated at the time and a hard-hitting puncher in um, Arthur Abraham from Germany. He took on an Olympian in... Um, Andre Durrell. Now, the fight against Durrell was in the hometown of Carl Frotch. And Durrell, I'm not going to lie, man. Durrell beat him. It was an ugly, ugly fight. Durrell made it an ugly fight. A lot of holding. You know, it was just a horrible fight. And Carl Frotch actually got the decision victory. It was a hometown decision. Let's not, let's not kid ourselves. But um, all in all, man, this guy fought Mikel Kessler, one of the best super middleweights of the era that fought Joe Kalzaki. And Mikel Kessler and Carl Frotch had two great fights. It was all action fights, man. I'll tell you right now, YouTube this guy. YouTube the Jermaine Taylor fight. YouTube the Jean Pascal fight. YouTube the, the fight against um, Mikel Kessler. I mean, these were great, great fights. He, he was an all-action fighter. He gave you everything that he had in the ring. He came to the United States to face Glenn Johnson, who was former light heavyweight champion of the world that defeated Chad Dawson and also knocked out Roy Jones Jr. out cold. Now, Frotch defeated Glenn Johnson in a tough battle to become one of the two finalists in the Super 6 tournament against Andre Ward. Now, we all know that Andre Ward defeated Carl Frotch by unanimous decision and was crowned pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world and also the super middleweight king. It also labeled Carl Frotch as the second best super middleweight in the world. But a year later, he had a chance to redeem himself when he faced another top undefeated world champion from Canada named Lucien Boutte. Now, Boutte was a fighter that came out of the amateurs and he became a world champion. He was making a lot of noise in the super middleweight division, but he wasn't able to compete in the Super 6 tournament. And he granted um, Frotch a shot at the title and even came to England to fight Carl Frotch in his backyard. And I was super excited for that fight because I knew it was going to be a great fight. It was the best fight in the best. I was glued to the computer because they wasn't showing it on any American television network. And um, the only way you could see it was on the computer online. And I couldn't wait for this fight. And Carl Frotch came through. He dominated Lucien Boutin and he annihilated him by knocking him out in the fifth round to make history by becoming a three-time super middleweight champion and winning the IBF title. 
Now, after that, Carl Frotch was back on top, still labeled as the second best super middleweight in the world, but he was still on top of the boxing world because he was back. And he made a title defense against a rival British fighter, a young, hungry, up-and-coming fighter in the super middleweight division by the name of George Groves. Now, George Groves was talking a lot, a lot of smack about Carl Frotch, and it led to a big fight in England between these two. And um, Carl Frosch got rocked, man. He, he got dropped in the first round, and he surprised a lot of people, George Groves. George Groves was basically dominating Carl Frosch, who was a little bit older now at the time. And um, he was on his way to a clear victory when in the ninth round, Carl Frosch caught him with a good shot and had George Groves in trouble. And he jumped all over George Groves and started letting his hands go, and the referee jumped in and stopped the fight. A lot of people called controversy on that stoppage, and they demanded a rematch. And that led to the rematch being held in Wimbledon Stadium in London, England, with 80,000 fans. 80,000 fans in attendance to watch this fight. It was one of the biggest fights in British boxing history. And Carl Frotch ended his career right there and then as the final fight. Last year in 2014 when he knocked out George Groves in the fifth round in a spectacular highlight reel knockout. This is the way you want to end your career. On top as the super middleweight champion of the world. And the man did his thing. He is one of the best fighters. He will definitely go down as a Hall of Fame fighter in his career when his time is called on to be called for the Hall of Fame. And I just want to wish him the best in his career, you know, in his retirement. Uh, thank you for all the many memories that you gave us, for all the thrilling fights, for all the UK fans that loved him, and all the people that got to see him in the United States. I'm just so happy that uh, I got a chance to watch this man because he is truly one of my favorite fighters of all time, especially out of Great Britain. And I just want to say thank you as... Um, all of you watch this video. This is my tribute. I'm Jay Calderon, Stan Clean Entertainment. Keep watching my videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jay Calderon Boxing Talk. Thanks for your support. Keep watching.